The newest class of U.S. Navy warships has also proved to be one of the most controversial in the military's history. Billions of dollars have been spent on developing this dual-class flight of smaller ships for more versatile operations at sea. Part of the reason for the development of the Freedom and Independence variants was for them to future-proof the U.S. Navy's role in modern warfare. However, the future of the LCS class of ships is hazy after a history plagued by choppy waters and issues. Regardless, the Navy is still determined to find a place for these unloved ships, which includes an exciting development which we'll reveal later in the video. But before we get started, if you do enjoy this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get more sent straight to your notifications. The U.S. Navy launched its first littoral combat ship, named Sea Fighter, in 2003. This ship used a swath-type hull and was designated as a fast sea frame. The ship was put into service in 2005 and as an experimental testbed ship using adaptable mission modules. Oliver Hazard Perry, Osprey, and the Adventure classes were all reaching the end of their life cycle, so the Navy released a need for the LCS class ships. In 2004, military engineering giants Lockheed Martin, General Dynamics, and Raytheon submitted designs for their efforts. It was initially decided to produce two vessels each of the Lockheed Martin design and the General Dynamics suggestion. Each LCS is slightly smaller than its predecessor, Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate, but bigger than Cyclone class patrol ships. Both class of LCS has a deck and hangar to accommodate SH-60 or MH-60 Seahawk helicopters, as well as a stern ramp for operating small boats and the cargo volume and payload to launch a small assault force complete with fighting vehicles to a port facility. Standard issue weapons on these ships include the MK-110 57mm gun and RIM-16 rolling airframe missiles. The LCS program represents a significant reduction in time to acquire, design, and build ships in comparison to any previous ship class. In 2005, an announcement was made that the first LCS would be named USS Freedom. The contract to build the ship was managed by Lockheed's Maritime Systems and Sensors Division. A year later, LCS-1 was christened and launched at the Marionette Marine Shipyard. Two years later, General Dynamics USS Independence was launched in April 2008. To bring operational issues to light as early as possible and collect data in real-world operational scenarios, the Navy made the decision to deploy USS Freedom nearly two years early. In February 2010, the ship deployed to the 4th Fleet in the U.S. Southern Command Area of Responsibility. During this time at sea, Freedom successfully conducted four drug seizures finding more than five tons of cocaine. The operation also detained nine suspected drug smugglers and disabled two go-fast drug vessels. Three years later, USS Freedom left port on the first LCS overseas deployment. It crossed the Pacific to operate out of Singapore for eight months. This marked the first of many planned rotational deployments to the Western Pacific for the littoral combat ship platform. Freedom has conducted maritime security operations with regional partners and allies. This deployment allowed the Navy to show Freedom's operational capabilities, but also to evaluate crew rotation and maintenance plans for the entire LCS class. The concept behind these classes of ships was to create a small, fast, maneuverable, and relatively inexpensive family of vessels. The small ship could then be adjusted to fit a bespoke mission. Therefore, the LCS is easy to reconfigure for different roles, including anti-submarine warfare, mine countermeasures, anti-surface warfare, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, homeland defense, maritime intercept, special operations, and logistics. The modular design of the Freedom and Independence classes was thought to replace slower, more specialized ships like minesweepers and larger assault ships. A lot of mission functions are carried out by carrier vehicles launched from the ship like helicopters or unmanned vehicles such as the Spartan Scout ANWLD-1 RMS Remote Mine Hunting System and MQ-8B Fire Scout. 
They can do things like sonar sweeps for mines or submarines, or torpedo launches against hostile submarines at a large distance from the ship's hull. This helps protect the ship's crew from attack. This is all part of an overall Navy goal to unman the front lines. One of the LCS program's main purposes is to take up operations such as patrolling, port visits, anti-piracy, and partnership building exercises to free up high-end surface combatants for increased combat availability. As part of this, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency developed a Tactically Exploited Reconnaissance Node Program, or TURN, that aims to build a medium-altitude, long-endurance, unmanned aerial vehicle which can operate from one of these ships and that can carry a payload of 600 pounds out to a radius of 600 to 900 nautical miles. Further to this, by placing sensors on remote vehicles, the LCS will be able to exploit concepts such as bi-static sonar. As the littoral combat ships are highly versatile, they are able to perform a variety of functions. The first is surface warfare. The surface warfare mission module is intended to deal only with small boats. It includes two 30mm gun mission modules, courtesy of Teledyne Brown Engineering. There's also an anti-submarine module that will have its focus changed from stationary systems to systems while the ship is moving. These are especially useful in the open ocean as well as in coastal areas. One of the items thought to be added is a torpedo detection capability, which means the ship can know when it's under attack. Further to this, there is also the Mine Countermeasure Module that is designed to provide mine sweeping, where mines are detected remotely and bypassed. But also Mine Hunting, where mines are detected and then disabled. The MCM Module is designed to perform Influence Mine Hunting. This uses acoustic and magnetic signatures, but not contact or mechanical techniques. This module includes the Airborne Laser Mine Detection System, the Airborne Mine Neutralization System, the AN-AQS-20A Underwater Towed Sonar, the Coastal Battlefield Reconnaissance and Analysis System, the Unmanned Surface Vehicle with Unmanned Surface Sweep System, as well as the Knifefish, which is a surface mine countermeasure unmanned undersea vehicle. Freedom and Independence were the first ships in their respective classes, but 35 have been planned and are still being commissioned. These are made up of 16 Freedom class ships and 19 independent ships. One of the Freedom versions, USS Little Rock, that was commissioned in 2017, got itself a significant upgrade in 2020. This was one of the most powerful military lasers and it gives Little Rock the ability to damage or destroy small boats, drones, and aircraft. This is a 150 kilowatt laser weapon system designed by the same engineers as the ship itself, Lockheed Martin. The installation was planned for 2020 and marks a significant intention to use the most modern weapons available to disable the most modern threats. The weapon has enough power to fry drones and small aircraft. It could probably do enough damage to sink small boats, which includes the heavily armed speedboats of Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps. The method to do this would either be by burning holes through the hull or detonating onboard fuel or ammunition. However, the key consideration here would be that the laser's performance would be heavily impacted by dust, smoke, water, or ice particles in the air, as all of these can massively degrade a laser beam's power. Much as all of these developments are good news for the US Navy, the program itself has been far from plain sailing. Budgets have spiraled out of control, with each ship costing $360 million to produce, as well as $79 million a year to maintain. There have been plenty of failures along the way, and criticism of the ships not being able to perform the original function they were designed for. But despite all of this, the LCS still represents some of the most advanced, compact, and versatile boats in the world. It remains to be seen what the future holds for the LCS program, but it looks like the ship's ability to be highly changeable will work in its favor in this fast-paced and ever-changing world of modern warfare. What are your thoughts on the littoral combat ship? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get our latest videos straight to your notifications.